The clownfish breeding saga continues. Some new failures, some new successes, and I'll tell you what's been going on with me lately. Let's go. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. I've got some good videos coming up here in the near future with some cool interviews. Also, the Aquashella adventure is upon us, so that's gonna be starting soon as well. So please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. Most of you probably haven't noticed a decrease in the amount of videos that I've been posting lately, but some of you might, so I wanted to address that really quick because there is an explanation. About a month ago, my co-host on the morning show, I do a radio show for those that don't know in St. Louis, uh, my co-host was fired. I am beyond grateful that I got to keep my job. I know this is gonna be for the best down the road. However, it has made the work environment a little bit more strenuous as far as you know things that need to be done. There's a lot of small stuff that ends up being a lot of extra time, which takes me away from all of the videos here on the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. Now that I've figured out the new timing of everything and kind of my new routine moving on, it looks like I'll be able to devote more time to the Llama channel once again. So thank you for bearing with me. I really appreciate it. It's just been a roller coaster over the last couple months. So I just want to throw that out there and let you know what's going on. It's not because I'm moving away from the channel or doing any of that. It's just that I don't have time and uh, hopefully moving forward I will have that time to devote to the channel. As you can see behind me this area over here has changed a little bit so the progression that's taking place down here hasn't really stopped at all it's just the documentation of that stuff has kind of like went by the wayside a little bit. The editing part of a YouTube video is by far the part that takes the longest and I realize that yes I probably do make a lot of cuts and I probably do a little bit more than I need to, but I really think that editing and making these things as, as uh, cool and as interesting as possible is part of the appeal of this channel and what I would like to continue doing down the road. If I had the extra cash, I would happily pay an editor to do that for me, but I don't, so we must move on. And I will move on now, no more excuses, let's talk clowns. First question, comment down below, is there something new that you've started in the reefing hobby this year? Could be a new fish that you've never tried before or a new size of tank. Maybe that's a Pico tank or a much larger display tank or maybe a species only tank. Let me know in the comments below. So my Da Vinci clownfish have consistently been spawning, which is great news because it gives me a lot of attempts at raising these fry. To sum up the first two clutches, nothing hatched. I think I either pulled the pot too soon or I didn't get the aeration right that, you know, the bubbles that go over the eggs to make them move. For the third clutch, I decided that I would try something new. That method I wanted to try was made famous by Robert King, which if you haven't checked him out on Facebook, you should totally do that. The Robert King siphon method. Now, I'm not sure if he developed this method or if this is just out there in books. This is a readily used method, but this is the first time that I had ever seen it. Essentially what you do is you let the parent clownfish raise the eggs all the way up to the hatch night. You add a small desk lamp with a siphon hose at the corner of the tank. And when those fry see the light, they will go to it only to get sucked up by the siphon and travel down the tube into the hatch tank. On the other side of the hatch tank, there is another siphon that is protected by a fishnet and some sponge filter so that none of the fry gets sucked up, but that goes to the sump, which is a genius idea, really, but unfortunately, it didn't work for me. So the return pump that I have on the frag tank is just, I think it's like a Mag 5 or a Mag 7 pond pump. It's just one speed and that's all you get. I did talk to Robert about this and he said that because it doesn't take a long time for clownfish babies to hatch, you know, after lights out, it's usually like a half an hour to an hour after that, maybe a couple hours and they've all hatched at that point or the ones that are going to hatch have hatched. So I could always use a smaller pump in my return chamber 
to pump water in the frag tank and have that still circulating, but it just wouldn't be as high of a flow. Because the problem that I was having was the hatch tank was filling up way too fast and it would have overflowed if I would have left it. And unfortunately I couldn't just sit down here and babysit it. I may try this down the road because it's kind of a plug and play way for the parent clownfish to just raise them all the way through to the fry stage of their life. But uh, we'll try that down the road. I need to switch out the return pump for sure if I'm gonna do that. So instead of doing all of that, I pulled the pot. Normal gestation period for a clownfish egg is about eight days. Now I let mine go past eight days and the third clutch to nine days. And when the lights started to come back up, the eggs had not hatched yet, but the mother started to pick at the eggs and actually like eat the eggs. This wasn't like a, a cleaning technique or anything. I think that they were so close to hatching that she got a taste for them and just started picking away at them. That's a hypothesis, I don't know that for sure. But I had a great hatch, lots of babies from this hatch, but alas, only one survived. How this happened twice in a row, I have no idea. If you're a scientist or a marine biologist, what is the reasoning for this happening? One fish out of a clutch of hundreds is the only one that survives. Out of four clutches that I've had, this has happened twice. So 50% of the time, one fry has lived. What's the reasoning behind that? Because in my last video where I talked about Uno and my one clownfish that lasted the first clutch, there were several people in the comment section that said the same thing, only one survived. So there's gotta be a scientific reasoning for this. I even left the light on after they were all hatched. I left the light on over the tank and I did have a healthy bunch that made it through day two. And then I woke up on day three and there was only one left. After talking with some pros, went down the checklist of things that could be going wrong, salinity or temperature or perhaps the light, or all of that stuff. Check, 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 all good. The one thing that I have not been doing is adding prime to the water. That helps with detoxifying the ammonia. I do have an ammonia kit and I have been testing, but it's not reading anything crazy. So I'm thinking what's happening is just that little tiny bit of ammonia is killing off a very sensitive baby clownfish fry. So by some random act of nature, I had one fish survive in this third clutch for my Da Vinci clowns. And I think it's only proper that if the first one was Uno, then this should be dose. So that brings us to the next piece of the puzzle, the next update in the clownfish saga, which is this tank right here, the Ben's Nems breeding tank. Ben had this tank laying around at his house and he had been trying to get me to start up a breeding program and have some breeding pairs at my house for quite some time now. So I was like, you know, this might be the perfect opportunity to just modify the stand that I have the frag tank extension on and just extend it a little bit and boom, we got ourselves a stand and a three cell breeding tank. What's nice about this is most of the plumbing is already done. So we really just have to drop a line for the drain down into the sump and then a return line, get some of that tubing with a check valve for the pump. And I think the Ecotec S2 is gonna be the perfect return pump for the job. I really wanna move a lot of water through this system and through the media to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. I'll run a skimmer and I'll run some media, perhaps some macro algae down in the refugium of this sump. And that's really about it. I forget how stripped down a fish only system can be. I'm also gonna go really slow on this because I wanna make sure that I'm taking my time, especially if I'm using proven breeding pairs. They've probably been around for a couple years-ish. And I just, I wanna take everything as slow as possible to make sure that we don't have any casualties in the process. Preferably, I like to start with the proven breeding pair and then kind of add on as we go. So that's where I'm at as far as clownfish stuff is concerned. I never really thought that when I started this process, I would get so hooked on it that I would wanna expand to multiple different pairs of clownfish, but here we are. Now, I promise this channel isn't just going to be clownfish. I'll obviously have a lot of coral content as well and a lot of aquarium content as we look to expand and make this room something different 
this year. I'm excited for the future. I'm excited to learn more and more each day. It'd be really nice to get 20 or 30 of these little guys to survive, and then I feel like I would have a little bit of a confidence boost. But right now, it's a lot of uh, frustration and just beating myself up for not understanding what I'm doing wrong because I feel like I'm doing everything right, but it's those little tiny minute things that you might be doing wrong that could just ax the entire plan. If you wanna tag along in this journey, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. And please let me know if you're gonna be at Aquashella Orlando. I would love to meet up. I'm speaking, I believe, at four o'clock on Saturday. That time has been moved a couple times, so just check the program whenever you get there and would love to meet up. I know I'm gonna be at the CJ booth for a little bit. Uh, we'll be hanging out with the guys from Fritz, like Sean and George. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I cannot wait to see you. Please let me know in the comment section if you're going, and I'll be on the lookout. And if you see me wandering around, please stop me. Say, hey, Remy, let's get a picture. I'm in the middle of writing my talk right now, so fingers crossed that you like it. I had a gentleman reach out who said that he was just at OSA up in Rhode Island, Ocean State Aquatics, and he picked up a bunch of nice pieces and to thank him for the recommendation because he wouldn't have known otherwise. And honestly, I don't know when Scott Crow <laughs> sleeps. The guy is always out there doing something. Dude is always on the move and I know he's gonna be at Aquashella, so I'm gonna have to meet up with him so we can have some beers or something. Big shout out to Fritz, to Ocean State Aquatics, to Ciche, to Ben's Nems. Appreciate you all. Hopefully we can all convene at Aquashella Orlando. And a lot of people reach out and say, hey man, you okay? You doing okay? You gonna put out a video soon? And I was like, I think I'm okay. Wasn't sure there for a little bit. I had to check in on myself. So uh, happy to be back. Happy to be making videos and uh, Let's hang out. Okay. Side note, I've been using this uh, video light to light Dose's tank. So, you should probably order another light off of Amazon or something. Okay. Well, uh, until next time, <laughs> uh, be safe and, and all that.